but I will put Purple Rain, that album, against any Michael Jackson album. And I guarantee you it will not beat Purple Rain. 100%. And I'm a biggest fan of Thriller. I love the Thriller album. Off the Wall is my favorite Michael Jackson album. But musically, it cannot compare to Purple Rain. Not never. Never. I'm saying it. Um, On the podcast, I'm saying it. I just feel like I, I want you to take everything you just said and throw it in the trash. No, I'm not okay. going to throw it in the trash. It's, that's, that is I'm, absolutely I'm ridiculous. I'm, and we're... Ah! What's going on, everybody? everybody? Welcome to another everybody. episode of Say It Loud Podcast. Say It Loud. I'm black and I'm proud. I'm your boy, CJ. And I'm Tim. And, uh, you know, we in here just talking loud, being we black. Here. You know, what we, we out do. Here. Um, we had a couple of different things going on as far as the docket is concerned uh-huh. uh, for this week's episode. Um, a couple of different things we want to talk about, but one thing we started to talk about, but I'm going to put you on blast. He, he, he got a little bit cold feet. Oh, no, uh, no, no, no. You know what? First off, <laughs> first of all, before we do anything, because it's Black History Month, this episode has been brought to you by Crisco. Because everybody's grandmama <laughs> used it to fry chicken. Yeah. And some people used it as lotion. But you don't we don't judge them. That's that's neither here nor now, there. Now to address the 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 elephant in the room is rather, he's a hater. I'm not a hater. Okay, first well, off. No, first off, if anybody if you guys see I just uh you know, I edit these clips as commercials to promote these episodes. So I'm going to drop a clip tomorrow, which will be Monday. Uh-huh. Uh whatever date that is, that's going to show the preamp to what I'm about to tell you now. Uh-huh. He's a hater okay, of, here we go. of Michael here Jackson. We go. I am not a Michael <laughs> Jackson hater. First of all, I love Michael Jackson. I am a like huge, a stepchild. My, I, don't don't dis <laughs> don't disrespect. I am I am one of the biggest Michael Jackson Michael Jackson fans. You know, I'm keeping it real. I said, and I'm not I'm not running from anything. I did. I said. I said last week. I said. Looking at the Super Bowl halftime show, Jennifer Lopez, who's 50 years old, her moves, her dance moves were not as crisp as they were when she was younger. If you watch This Is It, if you watch his see, 30th see, right anniversary here is where you special, messed up hold on, let, let, me, let me finish my thought. Let me finish my thought. When you watch those two, epi- those two specials of Michael Jackson and he's dancing, you cannot sit here and tell me with a straight black face. CJ, that Michael Jackson's moves was just as crisp as they were back when he was younger. No, they weren't. And here's why. Not only, like I said, because he was high, but Uh he was in practice. Okay, he was not going full speed. He wasn't going hard. You saw him stop and tell people, like, okay, we ain't got to do too much. You know, it's practice. You know what I'm saying? So you can't judge his practice high moves Okay. against okay. his, you know, 20 years ago. Okay, well. That's but, all I'm saying. No, but, that was hate. No, look, you did it on purpose. He was taking them drugs for years. And that and never, was and was flawless. That never impeded his uh his dance Actually, moves Actually, I just kind of messed my own point up. Yes, yeah, you did. Thank you. I didn't impede his moves whatsoever until he got old and his moonwalks and no, his side no. and, and his moves were not as crisp. I'm not going to do this. Even though he was pra- – when have you ever known Michael Jackson to go halfway practicing? He's a I'm, perfectionist. Listen, He's going to go hard even All in I'm practice. saying is that in those last days of his life, he had a lot going on. Not only the drugs, not only the show – but you saw what he was wearing yes. at the practice. The man okay. on purpose walked out of his house in orange pants and a silver jacket. That's, okay. There was something going on there. So because his dance moves wasn't up to his no. 20-year-old self, you're just going to be over here hating, throwing no. just He just wearing Captain Crunch hate. outfits, and he still move, uh, move good. I don't you take see that this America? as an excuse. You see what I'm talking about? He's a hater. Hating on Michael hater. Jackson. I'm not but, a hater at all. I'm calling a spade a spade. When you older, you and he hates black people. Oh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. You, I, how dare you throw dirt on my name? I am black and no. brown. But so, so this is uh, that was kind of the preamp to where I was going um, today. You know, we started talking uh, because he thinks that I'm a prince hater. 
I, I know he's a Michael Jackson hater and he thinks I'm a Prince hater. So I challenged him to a duel of songs. Uh -huh. I, I said, listen, if you really want to do this, then you pick your top 10 Prince songs. Uh -huh. I'll pick my top 10 Michael Jackson songs uh -huh. and we can go head up to see who's better. Problem is we don't have an impartial judge. We actually do. Somebody producing. Big first time producer on the camera. What up, Jay? Hey, Kev on stage. We got our own Joshy Gons. <laughs> His name is Joshy Shinoda. <laughs> His name is Josh. So, <laughs> but, uh, but he doesn't really listen to either Prince or Michael, so he's not going to be a valid tiebreaker person. But we can just have an honest discussion. If you still now, he backed out is what happened. Oh, okay. See, see, he couldn't find Josh, ten. I, no, hints. I got ten. I got ten. He got ten uh, foul ticks. No, I he got, ain't got ten hits. Oh no. Okay, here we go. See, yep. you just disrespecting Prince. Come now. on. No, here's You're the being thing. And before we get into this, I like Prince. I actually do like Prince. But when you we bring up the comparison of Prince to Michael, there's certain things that you can compare and certain things you can't. You know what I'm saying? So because I say he's not that great at certain things that Michael is great at, that comes off as hate. Uh -huh. And I'm like, nah, Michael's just better. That's all. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I, I may be I may be going off kilter, and I debated even saying this because I'm I'm a, I'm a passionate person. <laughs> I love Michael Jackson and I love Prince equally, but I will put Purple Rain that album against any Michael Jackson album. And I guarantee you it will not beat Purple Rain, 100%. And I'm a biggest fan of Thriller. I love the Thriller album. Off the Wall is my favorite Michael Jackson album. But musically, it cannot compare to Purple Rain. Not never. Never. I'm saying it. Um, On the podcast, I'm saying it. I just feel like I, I want you to take everything you just said and throw it in the trash. No, I'm not okay. going to throw it in the trash. It's, that's, that is I'm, absolutely I'm ridiculous. I mean, we're just speaking musically. 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 And now you're musically. talking the album or the album. Stuff, the album as Purple a Rain. whole. How many, how many tracks was on that? On Purple Rain? Yeah. Oh, I don't have my, dang it. Actually, it doesn't matter because I can't back up any. How no, many no, no, no. I got you. Okay. I got you. I got you. Let me, let me pull it up real quick. Because um, if you're talking about the Purple Rain, the album. Will will beat any any Michael Jackson album? That's what you're saying. I will put Did it I up hear against that? any Michael Jackson. Oh, we'll album. put it up. Okay, not beat. Okay, I get it. Okay, you'll, so you'll come and to I the said game. I would but... pick Purple Rain <laughs> above above any Michael Jackson album. It's just I've and I've listened to every Michael Jackson album front to back. And the thing about Prince, Prince's music was still good later in his career. Okay. Was Invincible good I'm like that? Gonna, I ain't going to lie to you. I have never in my life rushed out was to buy a Prince album. Was Blood album. on the Dance Floor like that? Good the, like that. The song Blood on the Dance Floor was good. The, the song, album was... was but man. Prince had albums that were still good front to back. I have never the latter of his went career. and bought a Prince album being like, this is the jam. And Purple That's Rain... not a thing. Purple Rain had nine tracks. Every track on here is a banger. May not, may Give not, the may, tracks. Give the nine tracks. Okay. You start off with Let's Go Crazy. Hey, pull up. Uh, thrillers album track list, please. You got Let's Go Crazy, number one. I don't know it. Take Me With You, number two. The Beautiful Ones, number three. Number four, Computer Blue. Number five, Darling <laughs> Nikki. Computer Blue. Number six, When Doves Cry. Number seven, that way, I Wait, I'm going to stop you right you. there. When Doves Cry, great song. I will give the props where it is absolutely due. Thank you for not being disrespectful. Number seven, <laughs> I Would Die For You. Number eight, Baby, I'm a Star. Number nine, Purple Rain. All nine tracks, front Two back. You can listen to and not skip. I'd never skip through this album. When I listen to it, I listen to it from So you one suffered every time? Nine. It's not suffering. It's a beautiful <laughs> album. I've listened to this. I've listened to Michael Jackson albums and skipped songs on because there. Because you know them because they are just ingrained in you. Because you know what I'm saying? Because they're, they're, they're not they're, I don't wait care a to listen how to many, them. How many hits was on that album? How many hits certified on the chart hits? Was on that album. He had on this album three. Okay, three on a, a nine tracks. Let's go crazy. Windows cry One, and two. purple rain. Okay, arguably I would die for you was a hit too because that. No, was I don't actually, want no arguments. I don't want to argue. I want the charts. I want the number ones. Because here's what I'm saying. This is Michael Jackson Thriller. So he had nine. So Mike got Wanna Be Starting Something, uh -huh. Smash, uh -huh. Baby Be Mine, uh -huh. 
<laughs> the girl oh, is oh oh okay mm-hmm. okay keep going the girl is mine which actually is one of my favorite songs on the album but was not a hit like that uh-huh but the girl is mine uh-huh. thriller which the video made the song for me uh-huh the song's good but the video made it uh-huh beat it great song billy jean that was on there <laughs> human nature that might be hands down the best michael jackson song that there is that's debatable that's debatable. That it yeah, it be, is debatable, but I'm saying that's might in get my into that next because uh, PYT, Pretty Young Thing. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Mm-hmm. The Lady in My Life. Yeah. So how many was that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Also nine tracks. Now out of these, can you find out which ones was number one? I don't know. I don't want to. Go through your phone. But out of those, I, I believe like six or seven of them was number one hits. Okay. So you're going to tell me. Okay. That, and, and that's that you can, they can have the number one hits. Musically, though, you you even you even looking at those tracks on there yourself was like, man. I said man. that for two of them. Two for out two of nine. Of okay. So you picked. Uh, I haven't heard like seven of the, the song. Uh, that's a lie. But like half of Prince's songs, I don't even know like No. That. I've heard them, but I, I've been rocking them. You like can't. That. Look, I. Thriller is a great album. I I love Thriller. Thriller you can't you can't even say a Thriller. great album. You have to say Thriller is you give it the props it deserves. Thriller is the top selling album in the world ever. And that's fine. Give it that. That's fine. Above the masses that bought the that bought the album. But me personally, music Did you not buy the album? I I bought both albums. Well, hey, well they I, both are in Michael. my repertoire. But did but do I, I I'm I'm Wait, I, if, what'd if, you say? if Thirty-seven okay. weeks. The whole album was at number one. Uh, 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 Michael, okay. that's fine. <laughs> okay, it's it's still not as good of an album as Purple Rain. You're crazy. I I stand. Okay, by, what stand are we by talking about? What I does die. good album mean? That means the way it's put together, the track list, the the all round feel of each track, how it flows together. Mike's Thriller album was pretty much all over the place because he had a song like uh, "The Girl Is Mine" right before. Uh, what what thriller was after that? No, what was that track list again? No, it don't. You know what? I'm not gonna do this. Mike's album was all hits. You understand? It was all hits. It was all hits. I'm no that disagreeing means, with you. That means that was how the album was put together as a hit. Okay, look, I'm not disagreeing with you. It was a good album, but Purple Rain. You you really if, okay? I'll say this much: If I'm going on a road trip and I have to pick one or the other, I'm picking Purple Rain all day. Every time, I no. can't listen to Thriller back to back all day and not. Well, first of all, if you're going on a road trip with one album, I'll that's trash. You, you're trash. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and I mean, to be honest, no. I probably wouldn't put Mike on a road trip, but I definitely wouldn't put Prince. Um, look, look, because I'm so passionate, I'll say this: Thriller is a great is a great album. Purple Rain is art. It's art, bro. It's I'll give you that. that good like, of an album. like for instance, um, Justin Timberlake's 2020 Vision. Yes. That was an art. Oh, that was a piece my of art. Man, shout shout out to Justin you Timberlake know. for that because that yeah. that stayed in my in my uh, rotation. For I'm a telling good you, that was months. a good what that the suit whole, and tie. Yeah. that suit and tie went hard. Oh, that <laughs> album was so amazing. Oh boy, and I'm so telling you, amazing, so amazing, put great put together. Then, but what's dope about here's what the genius behind 2020 experience was. He released the the first part. Mm-hmm. And then you thought that was great. That first part was great, but then he came out with the complete edition yeah. with the last half of it. Yeah. And that was fire. See, but here go the thing. Justin B. Dope when he with Timberland. Oh, he's yeah. He's always dope when he's with Timberland. And then he got off that and we was like, nah. What was that last one? <laughs> uh, Man, of, Man of the Woods? <laughs> it was something. Was it Man of the Woods? Something like that? <laughs> no, I said. I, I, I the put, bros I, was like, nah. Nah, <laughs> we was rocking with you in 2020, but then you came out with this. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Now you now you showing your true colors, Justin. Yeah, like, that was whack. That's whack, bro. Um, But, okay. So... With this, with this, Mike. So you really are gonna sit here with a straight face and say that Purple Rain the album with is the straightest just a face, better with the straightest face. If you know anything about, if you got any musically, anything musically in your heart, you would know that Purple Rain is a more better, is a better put First together. First of all, I didn't like the way you said it, you, yeah. and that's why you stuttered. Yeah, more, better. Like, more, no. more better, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen, I, I just, I, and I will completely give you that, Prince. Um, 
Better musician. Michael's not a musician. Was not. Or he might be alive. Who knows? Uh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, that Prince is a better musician. Vocally, honestly, if I can be 100, 100, when Michael was younger, I mean, you could say Michael sang when he was a kid. Um, as an adult, he was singing. <laughs> you know, so I think his voice, you know, the, that oomph behind it left. But if I'm keep it all the way a buck fifty with you, I think Prince and Mike, they both was hee hee with it. Oh. Only Mike did hee hee and Prince did ooh. It. Yeah. It was all the same. It's, <laughs> it's, it's all it's it's all it's all the same. You think one copied the other? In this sense I would say you think Michael kinda went after Prince's swag a little? You know, I, I might concede to that. Okay, okay, you know what? And and to that I say even Michael Jackson, when doing the moonwalk, he got that. He was taught that from someone else. Well, yeah. So I wouldn't put it past Mike that he got some of his swag, some of his stuff from Prince or any other artist that was out there. In, in yeah. Time. But Prince did this, did the same thing. Oh know? yeah, all artists I think pull from other people and then make it their own. I think with Prince and Michael because they was already in this arena together where they were back and forth, and they both. Mike got light skin. Yeah. And then they both had, you know, luxurious hair. Well, yeah. And but, but Mike Mike was more likely to do it. Prince was always an original. Like I don't, Yeah, I, that's the thing. That's why I say do you think Mike copied him cuz Prince was just I'll do what I, I, think, I want. I think Mike would have <laughs> Mike got a little pit pieces of something from from Prince cuz cuz oh what? <laughs> We're too, this, too, yeah. too similar. And I mean they got uh, the funniest thing about them too that I, you know, was listening and watching. Uh Prince said that Mike asked him to be in the bad video. Yeah, I saw the that. The part that Wesley Snipes played. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Wesley Snipes, that was his first role yep. in anything, and in, the he, Jackson Jackson in the Michael Jackson bad video. first role in the Michael Jackson bad video. But apparently Mike asked Prince to, to play that part. Yeah. And Prince got the track, and he said, first thing he said, uh, who's singing that first line? Because <laughs> you sure ain't saying it to me. And the first line of that song is, Yo, bud is mine. <laughs> Prince was like, I think not. <laughs> yeah, I'm not singing. I'm not singing that. He's like, I ain't singing it to you, and you sure ain't saying it to me. Nah. <laughs> Maybe that's where the beef started. You I ain't bad. <laughs> you you ain't you think, bad. You ain't nothing. See Prince doing the part down. that Wesley Snipes did? <laughs> and here's the thing. I don't know if this is colorism. I'm sorry if it is. But uh, Wesley Snipes, Darkness, he was out here. Blacker than black. black. Um, he now, was the can you dark see, skin dude. Yeah, can you see that that exterior of aggression and anger, but Prince doing it now? Yeah, no. Everybody, just put Prince in your mind as Wesley <laughs> Snipes. You ain't bad, man. Because <laughs> Prince's hair was laid to the side too. You was laid. <laughs> How he go? Uh, you know, like <laughs> what was that supposed to look like? But, but Prince's voice was naturally deep, though. Yeah. Know, well, talk. so is Michael's, which was always, I guess that was the weird part to me. I think that's where show business got him because um, they wanted him to have this young persona when he was younger. Right. Um, so growing up, I'm like, and you could hear him in interviews and talk. He was like, my natural voice is here. And he talks and it's like, bro, you sound like a normal person. Right. Why are you talking through your nose like that? Whatever is left. It's that's the, rude. That's the I hardest. That. That's the craziest like thing about. Michael. That's the craziest thing about personas. Like they'll make you, like literally, recreate your whole person. Yeah. Like if you saw Mike anywhere, he was like that persona. But I, I bet you, he was so different behind closed doors. Absolutely. At home, I used to make a joke. Like I used to make a joke with my friends. I'm like, you think Michael Jackson ever played rock band? <laughs> yeah, or, <laughs> you, ever, you ever think he would like karaoke to somewhere? I think, bro, I'd be wondering that what famous people do. Like, well, what y'all do for fun? I mean, I know famous; they just people with a, a great job, right? And I think we forget that you know they like to hang out. You know, right. for instance, I have been on tour, right? I have been paid to go somewhere and sing. So, technically speaking, that's professional. Now, Chris Brown. Technically, he gets paid to go sing somewhere. He gets paid a lot more right. and goes a lot of different places. Right. But you forget that after all of that money is stripped away, right. they just a person like you. Like, what do you do for fun? You karaoke, Michael Jackson? <laughs> he might. He might. You know? You know, or, he might be up there, you know, watching Netflix. Mm-hmm. Netflix and chill. Well, like I'm normal people. You. And I bet money that Chris, that, that Chris Brown used the example. I bet you money. He'll, he'll give his whole tour check just to switch places with you just for a week. <laughs> I'll take it. 
<laughs> I'll go. My name's Chris too. Because how? So. Because how? How bad do you think someone famous wants to be normal? Like, yeah. we take that. We we as I'm. A, I'm gonna get a little deep real quick. I'm gonna get a little deep. Us normal, unfamous people. I mean, we we up here on this podcast now. We we trying to we trying to we do trying to thing. do something. We but do but something. here's the thing. Like with fame, you t- you kind of give away normalcy yeah you can't go to the store real quick like you used to you Mm -hmm. can't go out to the movies regular and not be noticed you can't Mm -hmm. go out to regular places for dinner you can't be really out in the public like that and i think it depends on what kind of fame though i think because we're in a place now that fame isn't the same as it was 20 years ago right and if you are if you're famous like that you're always busy Mm -hmm. your schedule's always full you're always doing interviews If, if you're say you're a singer you're always doing interviews. You're mm-hmm. always doing press conferences. You're always rehearsing. You're always in the studio. Yeah. And you tend to be like, you know what? I wish I could just not do nothing. Mm-hmm. And you I miss that. that. Yeah. And, you know. But see, I think once you start to look, though, at the balancing act of what you're doing and what, you know, I'm right. doing all of this stuff and it's making me tired. I wish I could be normal. But then you sit and remember what normal was and that, that day job. Right. And it's like, ah, right. You know what? <laughs> and that's and that's what I think that's what drives people to be to stay in that lane of mm-hmm. success cuz they know what it was like to eat top ramen and hot dogs and drink Kool-Aid from a mason jar. They know what it was mm-hmm. like to take the bus. I ain't want to be oh, the bus is trash. Man. <laughs> the stories I have taken that telling metro. You. Yeah. Woo, Been on boy. the bus. Been on the bus. Actually, I just had a inst or not Instagram a Facebook story. Not story, a Facebook a memory pop up. Right. And, you know, I used to ride the bus before I got my car. And right. I, I would always talk about whatever's going on. And this one time I read it, I'm sitting there and some dude uh, drops a bunch of change out of his pocket. And uh-huh. It was a grown man, uh-huh. minding his business. Right. So he's picking all the change up. A quarter comes down and hits me by my foot. Right. I pick it up, but the dude is way in the back of the bus. I'm not, I'll give it to him, you know, later. So he goes to get off and I say, hey, man. And I give him the quarter like he dropped this. And he was just like, hey, thank you. Like, he needed that. Right. So I'm like, cool, you're welcome. This kid who couldn't have been more than, actually, I know how old he was because he told me eventually. He's 14 years old. He says to me, hey, man, why you do that? And I look, and I have my headphones on. So I took him, I was like, what? what? What do you mean? He was like, why you give him that quarter? I said, because it was his. He dropped it. And the kid was like, I want to quote him right. But he, the kid was just like, nah, man, you found it. That's yours, man. Forget him. So I told the kid, I said, you know, uh, that's pretty corny. I was like, taking people's uh, stuff, especially their money, is, is corny to me. Uh, and I told the kid, I was like, it's a quarter. I get it. Like, what am I going to do with a quarter? Nothing. Right. Like, that's just trash to me. Right. And the dude was just there, or the kid, the kid was just like, man, whatever. So then I took this opportunity because I'm like, you know what? You seem b- like you about money. I said, how old are you? Or no. Sorry, he said something. Then I asked him that. He said, uh. Hey, man, you want to buy some chronic? And I looked at him and I said, little man, how old are you? He said, I'm 14. And he said it like proud. Like, yeah, I'm 14. I'm out here. Uh. And I said to him, and this was so serious. I looked at him and I said, so that's where you're at with it? I mean, that was simply just, so that's where you're at with it in meaning his his life. Uh, And he just looked at me like, huh? And I just kind of shook my head and was like, put my headphones back on and turn and i'm just like y'all kids today wilding wow middle of the day 14 year old selling chronic on the bus and it's a weekday you ain't have you ain't have no school to go to nothing wow so uh the bus is trash i don't like to be in that environment because uh <laughs> it's just let me, too much. let me let me let me tell you something bro like this is why this is why this generation the younger people get so much flight back in the day you couldn't mess up in public like that because no. you had you had the OGs around you, old people who been through this to check you in public. And if you lived in a small like the community like I grew up in, I grew up in Benson Village in Kent, Washington. Okay, I grew up I grew up with a, everybody around me knew my mama, knew my grandmama. I was friends with everybody in the whole complex. Yeah. I couldn't do nothing that the outside of my character without getting checked. 
by one of my neighbors or someone who lived across from me because they know my mama, they know my grandmama, so they would check me. That's why I grew up and I have sense. Now, these young cats out here being mad disrespectful yep. and just talking uh, talking out their neck, getting all kinds of craziness. I don't get it. Let me tell y'all something. Anybody older watching this, if you ever out in the public and you see a young cat cutting up like that, Feel free to whoop no, they behind. No, I can't. No. I can't get behind you on this. Here's the problem with that. What's I the agree with you in theory. Okay. I agree with the sentiment, but the fact is, these grown ups trying to be grown and go and deal with the child. Some of these children will shoot you in your damn face, and I don't know if it's worth it. Uh, I might just let you be bad. You're not my kid. And I understand that's kind of how we got to where we're at is people just like, it ain't my problem. I get that's where it started. The problem is we're so deep into that. Who's going to be the one to jump in them trenches and take them bullets if they come? Because you just go grabbing up kids. Not only would a kid might hurt you, of course, they parent going to come around. It's the don't touch me, don't touch them, don't do this, don't do that. So now not only is you fighting the kid who you was just trying to help, now you got to fight the parents. And then the police come. And then when you black in the situation, it's a whole thing. Okay. I, well, you know? if you well if you, if you if you don't whoop them, say something. Like, I'm with the same Speak something. up. You know what I'm saying? Don't let these, these young kids out here be disrespectful. <laughs> Don't like you shouldn't let these young punks out here be disrespectful, especially yeah. to older people. Yeah, that be the thing. When it's them to the when it's them to themselves, they talking to you. I'd be like, y'all are ignorant and you're making us look bad as a people. But I don't want no smoke right now. But when it's you know younger folks talking to older folks, it's, it really does hit you differently as you get older. It's just like, why are you? What's the point of this disrespect? Especially to somebody who you don't know. Right. Who you should just have respect for off GP. That's right. just an older person. Right. Cordial respect, whatever you want to call it. But people go out of their way to be mad, disrespectful, and just 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 out of pocket. And uh, yeah, I think we need to go back to beating kids. But beat your own kids. <laughs> you know for what real. I'm saying? And I think that speaks to the the selfish nature of of the of society. Now we ask you about the quarter. Like, yeah, really, it was a don't... quarter. I'm okay. Saying. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Quarter or not, like people still, there's still, there's still goodness in this world. Yes. People still pay it forward. People still give back your property when you drop it. Mm -hmm. People still turn in your wallet if the if you drop it. You people know, still do that. I ain't gonna hold you. I so I worked at uh, the Seattle Great Wheel down on the waterfront some years back ago, and one time. You know, people would leave stuff or drop stuff on the, the gondolas all the time. And I was a ticketing supervisor, so I'd be in a little booth. So one time, uh, one of my one of my people out on the platform came back with an envelope and was like, somebody left this. It was an envelope with six grand cash just stacked in it. So I'm going to be candid because I don't work there no more. And I, and I didn't <laughs> break the law. But let me just tell you what was going through my head. Uh -huh. I'm in this booth. Right. And there are three cameras, uh -uh. and I, I'm supposed to put it in the safe. As soon as they came in the door, and they was like, they told me what happened, uh -huh. and they had the envelope out. Right. And before I touched it, I just kind of looked up at the camera and was like, it's too late now. But I just said to them as I took it, I was like, listen, if you ever find a blank envelope with no markings, and a bunch of cash in it ever again. You put it in your pocket. You come back here. You come here. No, you come here, but don't let that camera see it. And you just whisper it to me, and then we're going to go take a 15-minute break and sort this out. <laughs> but the cameras what? done got us. So you know <laughs> I ain't going to lie. I was going to take it. That's I ain't going to lie. But God knew. He was like, nah. <laughs> that's, but that's where, that's where the morals come in. And the person came. And okay. the person came back. Because you never know. That could have been somebody's rent money. That could have been a down payment on someone's surgery. Yeah, but it was, cancer, it was chemo. six grand cash, and they was on a Ferris wheel. It must have been a tourist who didn't who thought Seattle was more expensive. It had to. It had to have been. That's the only logical. Why would you have that much on you in public? This was real public, not just. <laughs> I mean, they was out of. Okay. I no, just. You got to. You got to. You got to find. 
let's find it. Find whoever own it. Yeah. Because it because God looking at you. Yeah, because in he real life, pull, he gonna pull that up when he meets yep. you at the gates to be like, "Well, what happened with that six grand, though?" I'm like, "I didn't get it, God." Because <laughs> that's the that's the whole thing is in in all honesty, there's been plenty of times where I could have done something, but I've always given stuff back. Um, I always talk in the I would have done this. Luckily, right. in this case, I can tell the story because I didn't have a chance. The person came in with the right intention, so. Right. Even if I had bad ones, I'm not uh-huh. going to jail. That's uh-huh. what we're not going to do. That's, yeah, right. <laughs> and the dude came back, and he was so thankful um, that we I had it in the safe form. Right. Here's the thing. He was like, thank you so much. It means so much. Brother didn't give a tip. <laughs> he didn't hook nobody up. I'm like, my mans. <laughs> I kept your ducats safe. But like I was saying, maybe he needed the whole Can I get grand. a tithe and offering? That's maybe all he, I'm asking wh- for. What did, the, what did the dude look like? Like was he like like was was he tall? He was he was short, short white, a little dude. chubby. Okay. He kind of it was um not a buzz cut, but but you uh-huh. know like a flat top GI Joe type of cut. Right. But he wasn't in the shape to beat anybody up. But what, was he? Did he look like he was from here? No, he he was definitely a visitor. Okay, he had to be a tourist then. Yeah, but only he could that, take, so he could have gave a tip. Dang. But only time, but he needed six grand exactly, so it had to be like a down payment on. It something. was a drug deal. He came to pick up keys. <laughs> 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 That's what that was about. <laughs> to came keys. to pick up them keys. That's funny. Um. So anyway, what, what were we talking about? We were originally talking about Michael Jackson and Prince. So to, to put a button on this, I really do like Prince. Uh-huh. I just when we always put them in the realm of. Prince or Michael, there is nothing you can say, do, no video you can play, no stat you can pull that can convince me that Prince and I'm not gonna say any way, shape, or form, but that Prince is has better music than Michael Jackson. Absolutely not. <laughs> That's so funny. I give you I've... that Prince has a better musicality. He is uh-huh. a better musician. Uh-huh. But when we talking about put the song on and bang out, I would definitely rock with Michael Jackson. Now I will admit Prince. that that you gotta be in a in a certain mood for Prince. But he does have songs that you could just play out of nowhere. Everybody, ooh, that's the jam. But he only got a couple that I can play out of nowhere. For he only real. has a couple. When Doves uh, Cry, I'm supplying, um, at Kiss. 1999. Kiss is the, 1999 is so overrated. Oh. Such an overrated song. But I'm not going to let no, you sit no, here. But I will say this, because on the Dave Chappelle special, uh-huh. when he was doing, when Dave spoke it, it definitely meant way more. I listened and I was like, hey, that was kind of deep. But the actual song, I was like, man, yeah. turn this off, bro. <laughs> it's 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 97 song or no, no, it was after 99 when I heard it. Yeah. It was like 2001 and I was okay. like, why are we partying like 2 years ago? Why is that the a same thing? reason you play Thriller every Halloween? He never said 1982. Oh. It's I'm 1982. Not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and let you disrespect <laughs> uh, Prince like I'm that. I'm just saying. That's just I'm mad. I'm just saying. Are we still living okay, in a time you know where a brother can just say? No, just just <laughs> say it. But but okay. So look. So say look, it loud. So look. I'm black and I'm proud. There it is. So, what's Michael Jackson's best song? His single best song ever. Um. I'm I gonna, would say album, but that's too easy. Yeah. What's well, his best? You can I'm, count anything from the Jackson 5 Oh no, to the no, Jacksons. I can't because because I have a song in my mind. If I pull in Jackson 5 music, that may just that I that Okay, may so single everything. mic. What's the best single Michael Jackson <sighs> song ever? The one I want to say, and I believe this is it, but I feel like one's gonna sneak up on me later. But the one I'm thinking, Human Nature. Human Nature is an amazing song, and Michael sang it beautifully. Yep. It, I, I mean, I can't. There's nothing bad to say about that song. Even when I hear people cover it, mm. they cover that song beautifully. I haven't heard a bad cover of it. It's just a great song. Right. I think the his single best song is is off the wall. Really? Yes. Because that's a great song, but that's I never looked at it as the song. best. I, I mean, as good as like want to be starting something. Yeah, thrill, it's got that uh, feeling. Bit it, beat it, but off the wall. I mean, you know why? Cause I'll tell you why. When I, I was there was this time where I had the album and my CD player broke in my car, and it got stuck in the CD player, and uh-huh. that's the only album I had for like a good month. Every time, that's every why you Friday, don't like Michael. Every Friday <laughs> after work, I would throw that song on and just 
repeat until I got home because that was my weekend kickstart. Feel good, like you could put. Well, that wait a on. minute. the The CD was stuck in there, but was only that song playing, or you would just no, play I that would one just play song. that that one. Song. Oh man, oh don't kill yourself like that. That <laughs> that'll make a song be trash in a minute. <laughs> no, I, I I can never get tired of that song. I love that song, hundred percent. Like everything in me loves that song. Okay, hey, I just wanted. To, I was looking at your ring. Oh yeah, the, oh man, that's the Infinity Stone oh, ring. Yeah, I seen the this Stones. dude, Jack Thanos. He got all of the rings right there, son. <laughs> I was I looking. I was like, he stones. got all of the colors. Random stones, Thanos. If you can see it, it got all. It's like the gauntlet, but it's on the one ring. My wife got me this uh, before I had my my uh, my surgery, and what's funny is I couldn't wear it because I was oh. like 457 pounds and my hands were super swollen. She gave you a gold ring. Yeah, she gave me she gave me the ring, and I'm like, okay, I love this ring so much, but I can't wear. It. I try to wear it once and can never take it off, and I almost had to cut it off. Oh, like, like, I had it. But then she was like, you can't wear this ring anymore. I was like, all right, I have to put this away. So when I started losing weight, I went and said, let me go see about ring fits. There it is. So I put it on, and it put on, came off, comes hey. on, comes off. Well, that's just like me. I was telling these cats, uh, you know, before we started recording, we had a little photo shoot was going on. So we was doing uh-huh. all these things, and I got these particular pants <laughs> that I had to put, I put them on and they was like fitting, right? And I came out and I was like, fellas, do these look like skinny jeans? Are these skinnies? <laughs> I can't tell because they look skinny, but my legs is big. Yeah. Uh, but So they're form fitting. But the thing is I can do squats. Right. I can do toe touches. Well, I, I can't, I can yeah. do that anyway, but I can move around. Now, America, tell me, I still got them on. Do these look like it? Because I've been eating fast food. I've been on the nuggets. Uh, <laughs> So I figure the glutes would grow out, but apparently everything fitting right, and I got room to spare. Tell me something. Uh, if you're listening, I'm sorry, you can't see, but you should go to YouTube and, and see if my jeans are skinny or not. And I don't want to hear the stupid jokes. The jeans are skinny, but you're not. <laughs> Suckers. Okay, tell me. Ah! Okay. Oh. How we looking? Can, can you see him? You sorry, see sorry, him? Tim. No, you good. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You see how it gets it's skinny around the ankle there? But these didn't fit some months ago. These didn't fit some months ago, but you know, I'm out here now. And I put them on and I was like, you know, I probably wouldn't wear these to work just on a regular day. But I might go do something in them. You know, right. I might go to a show, which is weird. I get on stage and let everybody see, but I wouldn't. My priorities are trash. I'm not. I don't adult very well. Don't judge me. <laughs> no. Let me. Let me. Let me tell you something about weight loss, bro. Yeah. I was. I was. So for one, if you if you ain't on my Facebook, I'm down 95 pounds. Woo! Since June. 95 whole pounds. I'm looking at myself in the mirror the other day. I'm just like, bro, you. Really? Like, I was feeling myself. Hey, hey. You feel me? Yeah. Like, I was like, bro, you are fine. Hey, like, hold on. I mean, let, me, let me check you out real quick. And I'm just like, I really look good. Feel it. Like, for real. And I'm not even at feel my it. goal yet. I'm not feel even at it. my goal yet. My, my goal is 280. Okay. I'm 362 right now. Oh, you getting there, though. I'm getting there. But I'm like, even at 362, I look good. Good. Like, uh. You feel me? Yeah. Uh, please, I'll be doing that. I got mirrors. I got a mirror over there. I got a mirror, big mirror you back see? there. And like, I'm catching myself looking in the mirrors every time I walk past one. Even in the the big, the mirrors, like, even windows that reflect a little bit. Like, yeah. Just taking the time and don't to let look. Me, don't let me have a, I put on a good fit that day. When right. I walk by, I see the full body down to the shoes. Right. Don't, don't, don't let me, don't, and don't let me, in. and don't let me walk past my wife and be like, hey, babe, look. Look, how I look. How I look. <laughs> like, hey, girl, I want you to see something. <laughs> what you think? What you think? <laughs> yeah, and you know, and you know, wifey gonna pump, pump, pump your head up. You know, she's my biggest cheerleader. Well, know? see, that's that's a good thing. You know, you you have a, a wife, a significant other. You can just be like, uh, sexy. But see, me, I got end up doing ignorant stuff. Yeah. I'd be like, so you know how you'd be like looking in the mirror and be like, dang, I'm cute. I do that, except I wait till I'm around other women, right. and then I pull up a picture or a video of myself that's look, really flattering, look, and I'll be like, dang, I'm cute. This is why God is good. <laughs> look, this is why God is good. God had me get married to my wife when I was still big. He knew that if he got, if I got this surgery and I lost all this weight while I was single, oh, trust and believe, be out here, your boy would be out here. <laughs> I'd be out here. He said, no, let him get married first so he can settle down and get, say all that for his wife. All this, all this is for you, G. GG, wife, wifey, you. baby, all this is for you. 
all these other chicks out here could just be like, nah, step back. Well, step back. I'll, look I'll, here. I'll, I'll, I'll take the ring. Well, I'll snap you. Snap you away. I'll snap him. Well, I'll tell you like this. I'm going on a Mexican cruise in a month. Um, so you said, GG, that's all for you. Uh, Mexican cruise, this is all for you, baby. <laughs> we going out. We turn it up. Hey. <laughs> he, go, he ain't going to. He gonna he gonna stay. He gonna have a yeah. uh, he this, gonna have a residency said, on the cruise ship. This cruise ship. gonna get whatever body I give it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. You know what? I think we good. Yeah. I think we good, y'all. So as you can tell, we was real passionate about some Michael Jackson Prince things going on. Stuff. Um. Yeah. We still want to continue to say Happy Black History Month. I got another official sponsor. Uh, my book. So me, Um, it's my book, Letters to a Blind Man, Read the Hat. It's a book of poetry. Last week, I spit some for you guys. That's not in the book, Um, but uh, this is, I talk about America, God, love, and myself, and I I talk some real stuff. Um, Not everybody approves of everything I talk about, but, you know, that's okay. I do it anyway. I say it loud. Uh, So you can pick this up on Amazon, cjdudley.com. Uh, money will go to support what we're doing here. We're about to be all in on this. Um, so, uh, we're going to try to get it going. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And also, uh, sorry, speak facts, clothing, go to cjdudley.com, speak facts, clothing link, and you can get the black excellence shirt and, uh, other stuff. And make sure y'all subscribe to the YouTube channel. Yes. Spread it. Please. Share it. Show your mama. Show your grandma. (laughs) Show your grandpappy. Your aunties, your nieces, nephews, everybody, everybody. spread it around. Yeah, Cause guys. we black and we proud. And yeah, we need all the love. We show and we show the love back. Yeah, we got some good things happening, some good things in the works. Yeah, Let's get it in there. Oh yeah, we are going to. We have been having. I have been having issues on posting the full episode video on Facebook. It'll show half of it, and then the. Uh, audio will cut out and i don't know why so what we're gonna start doing guys is we're going to post our snippets on the facebook page and all commercials concerning each episode on the facebook page but the actual episode video will be only dropped on youtube the full um episode videos will only drop on youtube but all snippets and everything else will be dropped on the facebook page so make sure that you go and follow the youtube and you click the subscribe and notifications button so you can uh be caught up on that and leave comments talk to us guys uh we like to talk about whatever y'all talking about we just regular black people right you know so uh i think that's it appreciate y'all we'll see y'all next week holla holla Ah!